Geeks and welcome to Hey Little Birthday. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I read in October and you may have noticed I have changed my setup here just at a slightly different angle to what I usually film at. I don't know how it's going to look so apologies if it's not great but I guess when I get to editing this video I'll see how it is and yeah let me know if you like this or if you prefer the regular setup. Um, but yeah, I just fancied a change and uh, yeah, just figured I'd try something out. Anyway, October ended up being a really good reading month for me, which was nice. Probably the best reading month I've had <laughs> in quite a while, maybe even the whole year, thinking about it. Um, everything was either a four star or higher. Uh, I don't remember the last time that, that happened, so that's pretty cool. And I read 12 books, which seems like a lot, but most of them were really short books. So yeah, bear that in mind. But the fact that there are quite a lot to talk about, I'll try and keep it pretty brief so we're not here all day. So I did share an October TBR video and showed you the books that I was planning on reading, which included a couple of anthologies and then mostly like 90s YA horror um, and a couple of other things. So I did manage to read everything in that stack and I think two more books in addition to that. So first up was The Dead Game by A. Bates. This was about three friends, uh, teenagers at high school, and they decide they want to play this game called The Dead Game, which is basically kind of pulling pranks on certain people in the school who really do deserve to be taken down a peg or two. But of course, things with the game go further than intended, and someone ends up getting killed, and the friends decide, okay, let's just stop this then and <laughs> pretend it never happened. But something happens, yeah, I won't go into what happens after that. But in addition to like the synopsis on the back, there's something else to the story, which I thought was, yeah, a really great development for the story. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I thought the three friends were really well written and believable and their friendship was really good and yeah the things that they were doing and their reasons for doing them to these people that they maybe didn't like so much you know also felt genuine and believable and yeah I just really liked the direction that this one took but yeah, hard to say much more about it without spoiling it. But yeah, this was a four star read and yeah, everything here, unless I specifically mention, will have been a four star read for me. So rather than saying it after most of the books, I'll just say it up front. Then I read The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike and this one was one that the synopsis on the back was not what the story itself ended up being. So the back explains how it's set in a hospice for teenagers and we're following a specific small group of friends within this hospice who, you know, they're all dying of some kind of terminal illness and they meet each night at midnight and tell each other stories and one night they decide that whichever one of them dies first should try and reach the others from beyond the grave so the others will know if there is something after death. So I was expecting this to be more creepy, suspenseful, horror thriller type situation and that's not what this book is at all. Instead it's much more character focused and we're following this group of teenagers who are dealing with the fact that they are dying um, and dying so young and it's about friendship and love and death and yeah I ended up really liking this one even though it wasn't <laughs> what I thought I was going to be reading at all and another thing is it does lean quite heavily into religion and spirituality 
and the idea of past lives, stuff like that, which admittedly isn't really my thing, but I still really enjoyed this one. I, yeah, I can't really put my finger on why, but I really liked it. I found it quite emotional. There were definitely a couple of moments that made me cry a little bit. And yeah, I just thought it was really touching. So yeah, I would still recommend this one, but know that it's a very different story to what it's described as. And also, don't think I've forgotten about the mullet guy here, but I hate to disappoint everyone, but there's not really a mullet in the story. I was so disappointed. We're introduced to these five characters sitting around the table here, and the only one that I can assume was meant to be Mullet Man was just like the joker of the group, of course, but he wasn't described as having a mullet, and yeah, that was just very disappointing overall. But somehow, like I said, I still really enjoyed this one. Next I read Let's Get Invisible by R.L. Stein. This was my first ever Goosebumps book and I really enjoyed it. This is about a 12 year old boy who discovers a mirror in the attic that can turn him invisible and it's all fun and games until things go horribly wrong. So yeah, I did a separate review video of this one which I will leave linked if you want to go check it out but I really enjoyed this one, I thought it was great and I thought it was, yeah, the perfect introduction to Goosebumps as an adult. Then I read Sabbath of the Fox Devils by Sam Richard and this is described as a splatterpunk take on Goosebumps so definitely not for kids it is pretty violent and it's about a 12 year old boy again and this one is set in the 1980s during the satanic panic and his parents are very strict and don't even let him watch cartoons and stuff like that and basically this kid goes on to summon the fox devils in a ritual in an effort to get some control back in his life and yeah, this one was really fun too. Fun, but also really serious as well. It definitely deals with some serious topics. I thought it was a really great mix of the two and I really enjoyed his writing. And yeah, I have a separate review video for this too, combined with the Goosebumps review. So yeah, go check that out if you want to hear more. But again, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Then back to a bit more 90s YA, I read The Dance by Barbara Steiner, which is book one in the Dark Chronicles trilogy. And at first I thought this was a trilogy where, you know, it's the one story going through each book, but I think it's just three books in a series called Dark Chronicles, but each book is an individual story. So yeah. Anyway, this one is about a teenage girl whose friend was in this mysterious and very elite ballet troupe and then she dies under some suspicious circumstances and so our protagonist is determined to find out exactly what happened. She is convinced that it has something to do with the ballet troupe so she ends up getting a spot as part of the group and is kind of going undercover to try and figure out what might have happened to her friend and yeah I really enjoyed this one too. This one had a really good cast of characters, I thought they were all well written and believable. The main character was yeah really relatable and likeable and the her kind of boyfriend and a couple of close friends were really good too and then the leader of the ballet troupe was really awesome too she's described as you know very kind of alluring but also yeah kind of mysterious and potentially dangerous as well and she has a sidekick who was really great too and yeah this one has a really good mystery to the story and uh, as she's trying to uncover what happened to her friend and it also had a really great uh, folklore kind of dark fairy tale ish element to the story which I thought which I thought worked really well and I really enjoyed where the story went. This one also had some 
Suspiria-ish vibes, which is always a good thing. I have read a couple of Barbara Steiner's books that were released in the Point Horror series and honestly I don't remember them being too good so I was a little hesitant about this one but I thought it was great, I really enjoyed it and I would definitely be interested in tracking down the other books in the Dark Chronicles series. Next up I read a graphic novel and it was The Crow by James O'Barr and this was my first time reading it and yeah I don't necessarily have like a specific reason why I haven't picked it up sooner it's just one of those books that I've always wanted to read but just haven't grabbed and the film adaptation is one that I've seen countless times it's a really awesome film and it's definitely one I saw a bunch of times when I was a teenager and I do think it still really holds up post teenage years as well. I had always been aware of the graphic novel and had just never actually read it but I am so glad I did because I absolutely loved it. This was a five star read for me which I think was only my second of the year and since the year is almost over yeah that's saying something so it's a really special book. If you're not familiar with the story this is about a couple who are attacked and killed and the male character comes back from the dead in order to have revenge against the people that did these awful things to them. I love the artwork in here, there are a lot of really uh, kind of stark scenes, um, it's also very goth which is always a good thing and there are some action scenes which are really awesome, you know, you can really feel the movement and it's super emotional as well. You can, yeah, really feel all of these raw emotions come through the images and the story. Um, yeah, this one definitely made me cry. And then in contrast to these really stark images, there are also some really like soft ethereal panels as well and yeah the combination of all of that really works um, really paints this story uh, all of the different facets of these characters and this story but whatever I am really glad I finally picked this up because it was amazing I borrowed this one from the library but it's definitely one that I would at some point like to have my own copy of so I can return to it because yeah it was just brilliant and it was five stars. Then I read Local Haunts which is an anthology edited by R. St. Clair over at Regina's Haunted Library and this is a horror tube anthology so there are a bunch of familiar faces who wrote stories for this collection which is really awesome and since this was short stories I was reading this kind of throughout the month but scrolling through my goodreads I finished it um, yeah at this point after the last book I finished so anyway the concept of this is each author wrote a story about a local haunt depending on which part of the world they live in so it had a really good variety of locations and yeah also just the styles of writing and the themes within the stories there was a really great variety of and like most anthologies there were definitely some stories I liked more than others but overall it was a really great collection definitely one I would recommend checking out and I did have two standout favourites of the collection that I wanted to mention. One of them was Crowthorn by Andrew Lyle. And yeah, this one was just a really great story, it had a really good atmosphere, it got really creepy, and yeah, I just loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And then the other one was Mount Gilead by R. St. Clair, Regina herself. This one was yeah again really well written and just so evocative I could just yeah really feel everything that was described and yeah had a really great emotion to it as well um, yeah I just thought it was a fantastic story so yeah those are my two standout favourites but there were plenty of other excellent ones in there too I just wanted to give those a special mention then I read Friday the 13th Jason's Curse 
by Eric Moss. This is the second Camp Crystal Lake novel and this is about a teenage girl whose brother was killed in a massacre by Jason Voorhees and she is having a really hard time dealing with the death of her brother and she decides to travel to Camp Crystal Lake to track Jason down and have revenge and her boyfriend and a couple of other friends end up coming along with her and yeah of course killing ensues. Um, this one is interesting and I don't know this might be slightly spoilery if, if you don't want to hear anything more about this novel then you can click ahead to when I'm no longer holding this book up but this one's interesting because it doesn't actually include Jason in the story. He is mentioned but the killer is actually down to Jason's mask which is cursed obviously and someone finds the mask and when they put it on they become the killer. So yeah a really fun concept and it worked well for the story. I thought it was really well paced. Uh, there are kind of kills throughout the story so it definitely keeps you entertained from page one and I could definitely visualise this as being a Friday the 13th film both in the sense that I could kind of visualise everything as though it might happen on the big screen and also it just felt like this could have been another instalment in the franchise itself so I really enjoyed this one and I'm looking forward to reading more of the series I only have book four other than this one and yeah these books are actually notoriously hard to get hold of and the ones that you might find online are super expensive. Would I say it's worth spending like a hundred dollars on one of these? No, but I say that as someone who wouldn't spend a hundred dollars on any book, do you know what I mean? So if you have that kind of money and you want to go out and buy them that's up to you but yeah I am glad I found these in a thrift store for super cheap and yeah while it was really entertaining you know it's uh, I don't know if it's something I would recommend spending a ton of money on unless you really want to. And then after that one I ended up finishing October Dreams, a celebration of Halloween. This is an anthology edited by Richard Chismar and Robert Morrish and there's a ton of different authors in here, a really great variety and yeah everything is Halloween-y in some way, shape or form and in addition to the short stories there are also Halloween memories from a bunch of the authors so I thought that was a really cool idea and they're you know kind of interspersed throughout the book so just you know it's everything Halloween-y it really does give you all of the Halloween feels and there are also a couple of sections in here which have recommendations for other books and also films which are Halloween related so I thought that was a really cool addition to the book too and definitely is good reference material for future Halloween reading and watching so yeah all in all this is a fantastic book I ended up rating this one four and a half stars. I will say, yeah, like most anthologies, there are some stories that I like better than others, so that's why it didn't quite get a five star from me, but there are a ton of really great stories in here, and I did want to mention a few of my favourites. A Red Dress for Andromeda by Caitlin R. Kiernan. Eyes by Charles L. Grant. The Trick by Ramsey Campbell. That one has stayed with me since reading it. Like I guess I only read it a few weeks ago but still there are some images from that story that are quite unforgettable. I thought it was an amazing story and yeah super creepy. And Pork Pie Hat by Peter Straub. And yeah, the only other thing of his that I've read is Ghost Story, which is probably his most famous novel, and I thought it was a very uneven novel. There were some things I really liked about it and others I did not. I thought it was really slow and dry at points, and 
yeah, it ended up being like a three star read for me and it made me think maybe he's not for me but I've always been curious to read something else by him because I know he's very highly regarded but after that experience I wasn't really sure what to read and if I should bother <laughs> but reading the story in here, Pork Pie Hat, that was fantastic so I am definitely interested in reading more by him. And I will mention I didn't read this whole 600 plus page book this month. I've actually split this over like three Octobers. So I've read a third of the book roughly each year. And yeah, it might seem a bit odd to take that long to read a book, but it's the kind of book that just it felt right to save it specifically for October. And I wanted to read other things during that month too each year so I ended up getting through it quite slowly overall but in that way I was able to kind of really savour it I guess and it's a book that I will no doubt return to in future Octobers so yeah highly recommend this one for a future Halloween. Okay then I read No Trick or Treating which is part of the Creepover series by PJ Knight and this is aimed at ages 8 to 12 so I guess similar to Goosebumps and this one is a series that I've only read one other book from it's the first book in the series but I'm blanking on the title and I read that I think maybe last year and I thought it was pretty good but it was one of those experiences when you're reading something as an adult that is aimed at a much younger audience and even though I thought it was quite good I couldn't help but think I would have enjoyed it more if I had read it at a younger age rather than as an adult so I went into this one somewhat hesitantly as well not knowing if I would really like it or not or if it was just going to be mediocre but I really enjoyed this one yeah this one was another four star read and this one is about a young girl who with her parents move out of the city and to the countryside and she is not happy about it but she does soon settle in at school and make some friends and anyway Halloween is right around the corner and she's starting to plan you know a party and going trick-or-treating but she finds out from her friends that trick-or-treating is just not a thing in this area they don't do it but she's like well what harm could it cause let's do it anyway but yes there is a reason that this town doesn't do trick-or-treating and they find out firsthand and yeah I just thought this was really great I really enjoyed the setup the main character was yeah believable and relatable and likeable and the whole settling into a new place and a new school and trying to make friends and stuff that was all well written too and yeah it just had a really good pacing to the story overall and when some creepy things start to happen later on in the story I really enjoyed all of that yeah, I'm not going to say exactly where the story goes, but I will say I really liked where the story went and it was definitely a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Um, and I, yeah, I thought it was great. And another thing I liked about this was that it never felt that the author was talking down to their target audience at any point. So I appreciated that and yeah, I just thought it was a really great story. It was spooky and uh, yeah perfect for Halloween so add this one for next year's list. Okay then I read one more point horror book this is The Body by Carol Ellis. This is about a teenage girl of course she has just recently moved into town and she is looking for a part-time job before school starts and she ends up reading for a girl who's the same age as her who was recently in an accident and she can no longer talk or move. So our main character is hired to go in to visit her each day and read to her and soon she suspects that there's something strange going on and she's having to figure out 
how to communicate with this girl since she isn't able to talk and isn't able to move and write anything. So it had a really interesting way of doing that and it's through the novel that she's reading to her that they start to communicate together. The book in question is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I haven't read so I'm sure there were some references here that I didn't get, but yeah I thought it was a really interesting concept and way of telling a story and I'm not going to spoil where the story goes but I did really enjoy it, um, I thought it came together really well at the end and it had this really great like gothic atmosphere to the story which I really liked. She's going to this big house that's like on top of a cliff it's all you know brooding and there's a bunch of mysterious characters and you know everyone's a suspect so yeah I really enjoyed this one. So at that point I'd finished everything on my TBR but still had a couple of days left in October so I figured I'd try and cram one more book in and I decided to pick up The Sitterford Mystery by Agatha Christie and yeah it's been ages since I've read like a classic murder mystery so this was really fun to dive back into that kind of story and yeah this was a really good one, another four star read and of course this one is about a murder, it's a classic whodunit and it starts off we are introduced to a bunch of characters who live in this really small village and they are performing a seance and a name is spelled out, uh, the name of someone else in this village who is not present at this seance and the next thing that's spelled out is an indication that this person has been or will be murdered. So everyone's a bit freaked out and anyway, needless to say, the person in question has been murdered so there is an investigation and this one isn't uh, Miss Marple or Hercule Poirot, this one is Inspector Narracott and I thought it was just going to be a straightforward kind of police procedural as we find out eventually who the killer was, which it is and it isn't because we're not just following this inspector, we're also following a journalist who is looking into the case because uh, he thinks it's going to be his big break in the journalism world and we're also following a woman who is related to the case somehow and someone who is a suspect so she's very invested in the case as well as she's trying to clear this person's name so it was kind of like a police procedural as we're going through the story and finding clues and talking about different suspects and stuff but it was interesting how it wasn't just from the perspective of one character, the inspector we are learning things from different characters as the story goes on so I thought that was really well done and the characters were all really great. The female character that I mentioned who is looking into the case was really awesome, she was like a total badass and was yeah just a really great character. Overall yeah this was just another really enjoyable and cosy read. So that was everything I read in October. I'm about to lose my voice I think. Like I said everything was at least a four star which is really awesome and then there was yeah one four and a half and one five star so a pretty awesome month reading wise. Let me know if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts or tell me what your favourite book was that you read in October. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!